loyalty card filled, time to go and cash it in. People watching these videos in um, months to come, years to come or something, I just all the electricians, all they ever do is go to McDonald's and eat and drink, get coffee. Well, you're pretty much right, to be honest. That's pretty much what we do. That's all we ever do, and especially coffee. And then eating. I mean, it's 24 hours. See, why do people cross the road with headphones on and their head, their head down watching their phone? They're going to be killed. Anyway, uh, morning guys. <laughs> Hello there. We've um, I've got a bit of a bit of a mixed bag again this week, with some limitations on what I can film. I'm afraid that's just the usual. That's the usual game with the uh, work, you know, electricians and stuff like that. You're in and out of other people's houses. You can't always film. You know, well, if you're a domestic anyway, you can't always film, and um, even when you can film, it's quite limited. But I'll get some stuff together. I'm sure there's, uh, well, we've got a couple of ERCRs booked in. Um, one's on a reasonably new build, so it shouldn't be too bad when you think. Although I've seen some horror stories in new builds. Uh, and then there's uh, some a ceilings dropped down somewhere. Someone's taken the ceiling down and they've, uh, it's exposed a load of loose cables. Never mind the coffee lid falling. Uh, a load of loose cables have fell down exposing uh, yeah, a rat's nest of stuff and I believe the upstairs lights have then gone off. Something's tripped or something so we'll go over and have a look at that and see what that entails. Uh, I'll gather up as much footage as I can and uh, yeah, let's get on with it. One thing we see a lot of here is in, especially in tenanted properties is extension cords, extension leads. You can see this over here and obviously extension lead plugged into an extension lead with multiple loads in it that's dangerous that's going to cause a fire that's going to overload that one 13 amp fuse think what's happening think what's going through that that plugged in to the source you can see there It's a, it's a recurring theme in this property, so I'll try and show you downstairs. Like I said, it is a tenanted property, so it's quite difficult to film. Here, I've just noticed on the boiler. There's no means of isolation. Why do I turn that off? There might be a switch downstairs. We'll go and have a look. Right, let's check this fuse box out. I can see what the consumer is. Actually, like, oh dear, get the torch out. Fifteen See what kind of a zeddy reading we get. So the sockets are wired in four mil. One point three six. This is. Oh, it looks like a ring. Untether these CPCs now because they're twisted together. I always hate that. Put a bit of sleeve in on that there. For the CPCs. What do you know? A full house. We'll cross connect them over. Plug this out. And 
know that I'm going to test all the sockets. So if you add the R1 to the R2 and divide it by 4, you get about 0.2475, something like that. So you round it off to the closest. And that's roughly what we're going to be getting at these sockets. There's only one socket in each room here, so not many connections, if you like. Oh, there's a lot of extension leads. Let's do an insulation resistance test now. Connect them up. Oh dear. Hmm. So we've run a link between the line and CPC down on the lighting circuit downstairs. Now this is not the end of line, the end of line is in the kitchen. But because of the age of the insulation and the property, they've all been running on one circuit. That's the bathroom light. There's the reading. I'll disconnect this thing. Henry, I think I'll disconnect this alarm in here. Right. It's as old as, it looks like something out of war games. Another thing we do when we're going out in the ICR um, is do a bit of sampling. So I'm going to go ahead and take off that socket in this light switch. Do a couple upstairs, a couple downstairs, and just basically that will give me a good um, visualisation of the condition of the installation. And maybe if we've got a bit of suspicion or something i'll take a few more light switches off or another socket off there's not that many actually so you know you, you don't have to do the whole house you just do a percentage but it does give you a good kind of uh, guide a good feel of how things have been done if there's ever you know you see any new cables been added or something like that sleeving missing or anything so we'll go ahead and have a look at the switch and the the socket Okay, so not too bad, there's some sleeve in there, it's been done in twin reds, no conductor showing. I'll put the camera down and give that a bit of a tightness test with the screwdriver, make sure the terminals are nice and tight, and we'll have a look at this. Let's sack it off now. Right, so no conductor showing on those two, that's good. Flying lid in place, that's good as well. Couple of grommets. Um, obviously, it's covered in plaster a bit and paint after 30 or 40 years worth of decoration. It's an MK1. Back when MK really were the dogs' mating tools. I'll check the connections on that. Make sure they're tight and screw that back and go and have a look at another one. Right now the power's on, we're going to carry out a ZS on the sockets, which is basically ZE plus R1, R2. Okay, so we select loop on the tester, you can see. Now we don't need the anti-trip technology, we don't need that because there's nothing to trip. There's no RCD, so we can turn that off. Plug that in. Okay, so 
but if you remember the hour when I'd had to reading we were getting I think 0.25 well that is the ZS 0.38 Can I get that out? Yeah, just I'm just, I'm, I, both, if I use the long nose pliers on both of them, there's one. Oh, good. You don't want to be sticking your fingers in that. And there's another one here, which is a bit trickier. along with a load of other mess. So that was the electrical report done at that property. Again, tricky to film, customer there, or uh, tenant there. Um, it's, it's just not, it's not feasible to film everything as much as I want to. Um, many things to discuss, faults, issues, problems, uh, obviously I've got to go and write up now, give it to the client, the landlord, uh, the agency, whatever, and tell them what to what to do to put it right. Um, now, I could sit here and talk to you about all the different codes and maybe even prices and stuff, I'm not going to do that right now. We'll talk about codes again, another video, another thing, we'll, we can go into it. It's pretty... I mean, to be honest, it's quite obvious. Some of the things are quite obvious there with the ICRs, especially, you know, you've got a bit of experience in this game. You've got some literature. You've you've got the absolutely awesome Code Breakers book to go on. I've had this, I don't know, nine months now, so probably end of last year I got it. And it is amazing. It's great. You should go out and get one of these if, you, if you're doing the ICRs. Um, if, if you're thinking of just being testing in general, it's great for that kind of thing. But it gives you a really good kind of base to go off. Um, it's, everything's in there. It's not just a base to go off. Everything's in there. Um, most things are covered, especially in a domestic. Um, again, though, I mean, we had no RCD. That was completely obvious. No RCD. I don't know if you saw that. You should have done no earth bonding to the water the earth bonding to the gas is in six mil we had a problem and a insulation resistance test we did uh, sorry an insulation resistance reading problem on the sockets uh, uh, there was only two circuits well three circuits i disconnected one disconnected the alarm that old thing from a spaceship or whatever it was uh disconnected that so we only had two circuits left lights and sockets that was the entire house it was a two bedroom terraced house lights and sockets that gives you some in indication as to how old the installation is uh, that and plus the fact that you know the board and stuff like that so um, you know it's like 30 40 years old when was the last time that got tested there was certainly no label on it and again this goes back to how it, why and how it is so important to do an eicr at regular intervals not just i mean like well, that's going to probably going to get a new consumer unit fitted on it now but you, if you went ahead and just fit a consumer unit to that blind no testing pre pre-testing or anything like that you would come up against problems and issues especially with that low insulation resistance reading so that gives you a good basis to go off now obviously it it goes without saying that 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 fault needs rectifying that low ir reading needs needs rectifying the other issues in there uh, i think there's a cracked socket um there's a, obviously a problem with a few light fittings the c1 that i put right that was there you know you saw the uh, the light the bulb smashed in the in the light fitting at the end um but yeah there was other bits and pieces um I don't know, there's lots of extension leads plugged in everywhere. I mean, tenants do this. I don't really blame them as such. Uh, it was it was uh, one socket in each room, I think there was. Uh, now, the tenant was a really nice guy, really nice guy. And he actually had done a course, he'd done an electrical course 20 years ago or something, or 15 years ago. And it was, he was kind of having a bit of a chat with me and stuff <laughs> when I explained to him about the extension leads. You know, when he came back with the kind of, it's low, it's low power, it's just a few charging, points and laptop and stuff like that uh, I still kind of said to him listen you, you can't you can't just keep I mean you can't plug lots of extension leads into into another extension lead into another extension lead and stuff but it's you know he held his hands up and he knows that situation um, but he lives alone and he's not plugging heaters and kettles and toasters and stuff into it um, so he's, he's, he's uh, you know 
it's cleared up in that sense. Uh, yeah, they can see me using it. It was damaged. We had. Uh, I've got a few, a bit of a list here going on, so I can just write things down, report that, put that back in my report for the uh, client. Um, signs of overheating. There's a few bits and pieces and signs of overheating. Um, and then um, the 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 two or three that ring to me are the low insulation resistance to reading on the sockets, the uh, no RCD and the no earth bonding to the water whatsoever. Uh, so quite major things, quite quite big issues, problems you would say, C2s. Um, but again, one socket in each room. Are we gonna fit an additional socket? We're we gonna go ahead and suggest to the client that we have another additional socket in each room because the tenant is using extension leads and that would kind of at least bring the extension lead amount down a little bit who knows um right guys um bit of a rant to camera today i suppose i was just going to give you back a bit of feedback from the icf but i will um yeah i'll look i'll get back to you on how we go ahead and what the what, what happens and stuff like that and certainly if we do go ahead and get the work and do the work uh, and fit the board and stuff like that i'll uh, i'll record all that for you all right, as usual, guys, thank you so much for watching. Bit of a short video this week, um, but click up here in the corner to subscribe, and I'll leave a couple of videos left and right as usual uh, from the channel. And don't forget to like, leave a comment, and share. All right, guys, thanks again. Thanks for watching.